I got one pass on a high five. She's like, <laughs> I'm good. Hard pass on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you very much. Of, Happy St. Patrick's in the audience. Day to you. My goodness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what a special, special day. <laughs> I'm glad I could spend this um, treasured holiday with all of you. <laughs> do, you do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day? It seems oh, like. God, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yes. Yes, we get the family together. We, we have games, party games. <laughs> Pin the tail on everything. <laughs> um, cake. <laughs> no, I do, I do not celebrate. Uh, you're, not wearing, you're not wearing a lick of green. No, so. I do not care. I'm an adult. <laughs> And no offense, you know, I love your spirit. I just don't share anything like passion <laughs> for anything. There, there are some very upset looking people in the audience right no, now. No, I mean, it, it's cool. It's, it's my hang up, not yours. You, you guys live the way you want to live. It's great. <laughs> uh, so we just saw a clip from the new season of Children's Hospital uh, in which you, your character Blake Downs and Rob Hubel broker a peace agreement, uh, an international peace agreement. You're welcome, world. <laughs> Uh, what are some of the other plot lines uh, and things we should expect this season? Um, God, you know, it's, this should be the easiest question in the world because I worked on it for so long and so in-depth, but it's always, the Children's Hospital by nature is such a... Uh, we usually have, within 11 minutes, three to five stories going at once. Right. So, um, well, this one, the, this is sort of the B, C story. The A story is... Um, they are brought to the White House to, uh, to, to a secret underground children's hospital in order to take care of the president's illegitimate daughter. Um, like you do. Yeah, just as, you know, it's like a documentary practically, this show. Um, there's one um, which is sort of in the same vein as um, True Detective, where, you know, Owen, Rob Hubel's character, Owen, has been was partners in the police force with uh, Nick Offerman's character, Chance Briggs. And we sort of see their origin story. And then also Owen's origin story, which is going to be pretty controversial, I think. <laughs> Dr. Maestro gets in some trouble. Many hundreds of people will be talking about it. <laughs> um, so as you mentioned, uh, Nick Offerman will be coming back this season. And the trailer uh, hints to some other new characters showing up. Uh, can you tell us about... Who, uh, who will be new to the show this season and what they'll be doing? I don't know. What do you know that I don't know? <laughs> uh, Tom Cruise. <laughs> do you mean like guest stars? Yeah, like guest stars. Um, oh, God. Uh, we've had... We, it was a pretty good season for guest stars, and uh, I will probably forget half of them, so I apologize. Because uh, you know that Robert Forrester watches AOL Build, probably tunes in live. <laughs> Robert Forrester, yeah, got him. <laughs> um, Nailed it. Yeah, there's a... Uh, so what? I thought somebody was giving me a hint. I had written this down in my hotel room on a list, all the guest stars. Well, so like Jordan Peele's in the episode that we saw a clip well, from. Well, yeah, we got the usual, the huge. <laughs> um, you know what? I will, when I remember a guest star throughout the rest of the interview, I will just throw it out in the middle of my question or answer, and um, yeah. that'll be fun. <laughs> uh, another thing from the trailer is that it looks like uh, Ken Reno's character turns into a werewolf of some sort, or he looks very hairy. Can you explain what's going on there? Yeah. Um, I, almost, I was almost worried about giving something away, but, you know, <laughs> it's Children's Hospital. Um, the, this is one of our sort of, we are right. <laughs> this is so funny because most of my elementary school pictures looked exactly like that, <laughs> except with hair. Um, uh, that is a um, fan fiction episode. It's one of our sort of departure episodes, one of our weirder episodes. <laughs> and uh, it's a, a, a rabid children's hospital fan is allowed to write an episode <laughs> of... Children's Hospital, and she's, she has experience writing fan fiction, um, Twilight, mm -hmm. Star Trek, The Daily Show, um, <laughs> all the fan favorites. And, uh, and so that's basically a real um, sort of fantasy land within a fantasy land. Oh, so things get pretty intense. 
things get really stupid. <laughs> yeah, really stupid. Uh, speaking of stupid, in the first episode, uh, Rob Hubel comes back from a, uh, his character, Owen Maestro, comes back from a five-year prison sentence, uh, but he finds that his office is not the same as he left it. Uh, explain uh, what happens to his office. Yeah, the first episode is called uh, Five Years Later. Um, last season, we went um, to Japan, and now they're returning, but yet this season takes place five years after last season, supposedly. And um, Rob is, for reasons that will be revealed, uh, put in jail for five years. So he comes back, loses his office, and um, has to regain his position in the hospital. And it's hard when your office has been turned into a public fart room. <laughs> um, now, but sure, you might be thinking, that's stupid. <laughs> but think about it in this way. Maybe it's great. <laughs> and maybe that's something that you know, your personal offices would benefit from, like a having a room, a room where you can just go, be by yourself, stand up, read a magazine, because you don't want to sit down, <laughs> and, um, and just, you know, spend a little, spend a couple minutes with yourself, just uh, cleansing yourself <laughs> of air. Farts are always funny. I don't <laughs> fight anybody that doesn't think so. Um, obviously, the show has a very funny cast. Uh, you've got Malin Ackerman, Megan Mullally, uh, Hubel, uh, Lake Bell, Henry Winkler. How much is there improvising on the show, or is it all? Is everyone sticking to the script? Is it locked in? <laughs> yeah, we're very precious about our scripts. Um, <laughs> well, the scripts are very meticulously written. We spend a lot of time working on them. David Wayne gets so angry <laughs> when people say to him, "Like, are you guys? Do you guys just get high and write the show?" And he's like, it's actually a lot of work. <laughs> but um, uh, so we, um, but, 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 but it would be silly to like stop people from improvising because we have some of the best improvisers work, Rob Hubel, case in point. And, um, and, and also like, it's, it's a common thing these days to feel free mostly, most of the time, depend, you know, on, in, jo in random jobs to, to feel free to improvise. Yeah. And it's only, you know, and I'm not also, uh, I don't, the, these scripts, I mean, I believe can always be improved upon and, you know, it's kind of like having those guys in the writer's room with us. Right. So it's, it's great. Yeah. Um, and Children's Hospital, of course, is a parody of a lot of other medical shows like Grey's Anatomy and, uh, Scrubs and uh, you know that genre. Yeah, of TV. It, it was. It was. It started off. It, it started off that way, yeah. but that's a that's a pretty um, I mean, shallow it, well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gone off the rails and found its own universe since yeah. then. Um, but have you like, especially in the early years? I guess did you hear a lot from people, producers or actors who worked on those shows? Did they have any feedback on your show, or did they any praise? Um, yeah, I, I it, it, it's. I, I think I heard that the Grey's Anatomy cast, for the most part, liked the show. Not sure about Shonda Rhimes. <laughs> um, so, uh, but other than that, I think that was probably the only real hospital show on TV at the time. Right. So, uh, no, the scary thing is, is when you take your daughter, I took my daughter to Children's Hospital in LA once, and um, the doctors were kind of whispering, and two of them came up to me, and they're like, we swear you have a surveillance camera in here because <laughs> this is just like our life. And I was like, I can guarantee you that's not true. <laughs> Wait, so actual doctors at a children's hospital were telling you that your show was so real to, like, realistic? I, I mean, I, I, I love their enthusiasm <laughs> and that they're like, you know what? We are just nuts here. <laughs> we are wacky. And... Um, but like it, that's a when you think about the reality of that, that's a dangerous, unsustainable uh, environment. <laughs> they could have maybe they were just being polite or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe they like really hate the show. Like, oh, yeah. thank God he's gone. <laughs> um, and so when you uh, the show started as a web series, and you got offers from Comedy Central to do a thirty minute version, and then mm -hmm. Adult Swim for the fifteen minute version that we know now. What are what do you what are the benefits of a fifteen minute show versus a thirty minute show for a comedy? Well, you know, um, I think 
I, I used to say, and I'm, and I, I, I still, I guess I believe this to be true, is that this kind of comedy, and it's one of the things that I like so much about this show is that it's kind of a relentless joke engine. It's a joke-based show. And that particular brand of absurd humor at that pace uh, own, it's only got about 11 to 15 minutes of uh, life in it before you're like, oh, too, like you feel like you've been beaten up by jokes. And so I think it's like a perfect, you know, um, length for that. But also, uh, I, don't know, I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> Robert Forrester. <laughs> Julie Bowen. Oh, yeah. She... Nailed it. That's a real one. He's not kidding. That's a real one. Julie Bowen. <laughs> God. She plays, uh, are, am I allowed to say who she plays? Or would that be Yeah, good? sure. She plays the president's wife. Yeah. Some would even call that the first lady. <laughs> not Entertainment Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> potatoes, potatoes. <laughs> um, over the years, a lot of great shows have come out of Children's Hospital. Uh, News Readers, which is kind of a uh, like a Dateline news magazine parody, and then uh, NTSF SD SUV, which is a parody of pretty much every show on CBS ever. Um, are there going to be more shows within a show that have a kind of a chance to branch out into their own life in the upcoming Children's Hospital, or will there be more of those just in general? Like, are you guys planning more? Like, no, we're not planning more. Yeah. Um, and News Readers just seemed we were always we were thinking about a spinoff because we love money. <laughs> um, and uh, but but nothing real. And then just we were shooting a newsreaders a couple seasons ago, and then we realized, oh, this is it, of course. Um, so that was that. But NTSF is not actually spun off. It's it. Well, yeah. It, it, but it is. It's it's obviously in the same family, right. same crew, production company, same family of comedians and actors. Um, but, uh, so no, it's not something I think consciously of. Right. And if there is another idea in there, I'm sure it will present itself and I'm, I'm open to anything, but yeah. uh, I couldn't, couldn't even start to think about what it would be right now. So, I mean, you're also one of the main writers on Newsreaders, obviously. Uh, what, how, what is the workload uh, division between Newsreaders and Children's Hospital for you? For me personally? Yeah. Well, Children's Hospital is... Um, it's much more my baby, you know, in that uh, I I'm very much oversee all of the aspects of the production from writing to editing. Um, newsreaders, I am able, I have the luxury of sort of doing what I like to do the, the most and really putting my energy into that mm -hmm. um, rather than just sort of water, water my energy down. Right. Uh, so... And we've got a great showrunner, Jim Margolis, who is a former executive producer of The Daily Show, um, who I stole. <laughs> and um, so, uh, but I, so I'm very involved in the writing process of newsreaders and, um, and the rap party. <laughs> I, I enjoy that. Can't keep you away from that. No, I'm a functional alcoholic. <laughs> uh, you mentioned The Daily Show. Uh, obviously, a lot of people know you as a longtime correspondent on that show. Uh, and then you also, you've, you were just uh, a star in Hot Tub Time Machine 2, and you were also in the first one. Uh, what do you get recognized for the most, like on the street, of those three? Or is there an, another property that you get recognized for? There's one more, um, but it's, uh, it's often, like, what I'll do is I'll profile people. <laughs> um, so somebody will come up to me, and oftentimes it's somebody going, because I'm sort of more that guy than the guy that's known from something. And if they're not confusing me with Dave Keckner or Paul Shear, <laughs> they'll say, which they often are, Anchorman I get, yeah. um, I get recognized from a lot. But they'll be like, uh, what have I seen you in, man? And I will basically just, I'll judge them um, <laughs> based on their appearance alone. Right. Um, we can go down the line here. Um, the Daily Show, what happens in Vegas? What happens in Vegas? You've never seen me before. <laughs> I could do it with everybody in the crowd. <laughs> There'd be a lot of, but those. Are, what happens in Vegas is another one. Yeah, you know, with um, women and uh, or young women and mothers. Mothers love me. Mothers love you. Oh yeah. <laughs> your, what, moms, what is... your moms love me. 
This, this woman is nodding her head vigorously. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your mother's <laughs> super psyched about me. <laughs> Far out. What's, what's the profile of a uh, children's hospital fan when you see, like, how do you know you're about to talk to one? <laughs> um, let me see. We got one right there. You know, sort of a um, um, smart but not too smart. <laughs> Cardigan's a dead giveaway. Is that a cardigan or a hoodie? Both the same thing, by the way. <laughs> same answer. It's a hoodie. Um, who else do we have back here that's a, definitely a children's fan? I don't know about these two dudes over here. They probably liked Hot Tub. These guys right here. They're more, they've got more of a bro thing going on. Um, so, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. usually the nerdier, sort of the Comic-Con crowd is really into um, Children's Hospital. Which, which fan is your favorite kind of fan? I love them all. <laughs> um, the rich ones? <laughs> or the moms? I, just, I love moms. Moms and network I'm <laughs> executives. I'm not kidding. <laughs> um, so Children's Hospital has won two Emmy Awards uh, in two consecutive Good years. Good for us. Yeah, congratulations. Um, how does winning an Emmy change the way you kind of write or approach the show? Or does it at all? Doesn't at all. <laughs> I mean, at least not, not in my experience it has. I mean, we're, we're just... We definitely appreciate it as um, for what it is, and and it's a, just a nice little. Rec- I I like the fact that something this weird and sort of outside the norm yeah. is recognized for something. So that's, but it doesn't ever affect the way we like. We don't. I would I would die if I went into another season like. Oh, gotta wait. We haven't written that <laughs> Emmy Award winning episode yet. We gotta think clips. Think clips. Like, that's just not the way, that's not conducive to good material. Right. Well, I mean, because the show is so kind of left field and a little alternative as to what usually wins Emmys, I mean, was it just a complete shock when the first year, I think 2012, when you won the award? Like, did you, was there any anticipation that this might happen? Or? Oh, no, God, no. When we were nominated, <laughs> it was completely ridiculous. And we were just kind of giggling, like, and shrugging, like, what is this, what's, what happened, what world are we living in? Um, and then as we got closer, you know, you start to do the little dance in your head, like, do we have a chance of winning? And, and, and you'd look at all the other, and there were really good shows on there, and, and you always got the one where you're like, oh, this one's, this one will win. <laughs> and this year, of course, we were nominated a third time, and we didn't win because... <laughs> we were up against the president of the United States. <laughs> um, or as you would say, the man the who's man married to the first, first lady. <laughs> when uh, I talk to him, that's what I call yeah, him. Yeah, so we didn't even go. We were like... <laughs> <laughs> you gave that one up to Brock. Gave up, yeah. <laughs> um, one more question from me, and then we'll go to the audience. Um, there was recently a small controversy. You had an interview with HuffPost Live about what you, one of your first acting credits on IMDb, yeah. it is listed as... Glad you brought this up. <laughs> you were, uh, it was presented to you that you were an extra in The Nanny. Man uh, at Party. Man at Party. You played Man at Party in the, uh, in the Fran Drescher sitcom, The Nanny. You denied this allegation. Mm-hmm. HuffPost Live and its readers claim that it's true, and they found uh, a short clip of a man who looks to be you dancing at a party. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you like to clear this up today? Yeah. Do you have it? I will say that that poor gentleman uh, that was in that episode of The Nanny uh, was born with a similar birth defect as I was, and that is the balding pattern that includes a tuft of hair right there um, that I have. I still have to shave every day. It's, still, it's getting a little rough now. I got a little five o'clock forehead shadow. Um, and so that, I mean, if you see anybody on the street with a tuft in the middle of your head, you're going to be like, that's the guy from Anchorman. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I mean, listen, I, I, I think that if Huff, Huff Poe is digging this up, uh, then they got to go all the way and they need to get a cast list. We need to get a call sheet and get <laughs> Dig that up the original name. call sheet. I'm sure they're on it. Those people are insane. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Rob. I think uh, we'll take questions from the audience now. Hey, Rob. Uh, my question is, have you ever received like uh, hate mail from the clown community? Because they tend to be very vocal of how clowns are portrayed on TV or movies. So have you ever? <laughs> it's a great question. Um, no, not necessarily. <laughs> but 
the re- the whole reason that came about, like I this the first time I got the Patch Adams question, like this is Patch Adams, right? I was like, oh God, there's the rest of my life with this show. It, it wasn't even a consideration. I just thought like for the for the hospital clown to be the least fun for the least funny, most serious hated man in the hospital to be a clown is the most appropriate because I um I think clowns, in terms of comedy or whatever, theater in general, take themselves so seriously. Oh, God. And, like, come, they're, they're, they're poop joke people, too. They, they, come on. They, they got a nose. And um, so it... it, it and th- but I, a good friend of mine that I grew up with um, is a clown, and he works at hospitals a lot. And that's a, that's a serious job. You know, he does a lot of good. And he was... Uh, he went to clown college... And I heard through a friend, or maybe it was on Facebook, I block a lot of stuff out, um, that he, um, it wasn't his cup of tea, the show. Yeah, yeah. But now I hear that he likes it, and well, that's crazy that I would ever say that, but you know, I create my own memories, as you should too. Functioning alcoholic. I think we've got a question over there. Uh, a lot of comedians recently have been reuniting their sketch teams uh, for shows. Do you think you'll do that with your team sometime soon? What was my team? Naked Babies. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Um, that's awesome. Naked Babies. Uh, we, um, you know, every once in a while, we, we usually get together every year and do a comedy festival that we sort of created with our friend Jeb, an original Naked Baby, in Telluride, Colorado. Uh, this is the first year I haven't been able to do it in like 10 years, but um, we, you know, we'll, every year we, we, we either do Sketch Fest or three of us, three out of the four will do Sketch Fest, but uh, it's, I feel like we've reunited so many times that to call it a reunion would be like, I don't know, name a band that keeps getting together. Name one. Don't you dare say Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> Uh, Buckingham, <laughs> <laughs> Buckingham Knicks. Buckingham Knicks. <laughs> nice. Any other questions? By the way, these are the best questions I've ever received from an audience, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> the guy you guys who, are nailing it. The guy who asked the clown question applauded himself when you said that. As he should. Why, why not? Why not? Uh, I think we've got another one back there. Hey, Rob. Uh, Children's Hospital fan <laughs> and hot tub fan. Go ahead. <laughs> Daily Show too. Um, yeah. Since you since you've it's been cool. uh, confused with the nanny, what other TV shows and movies would you like to uh, just assume that you've been in for people? Oh, assume that I've been in? Yeah, just make some up that you'd like to be confused in. All of them, <laughs> you know, all of them. I, I, you're saying that what show? What, what show would I love to have done? Essentially, right? No, I don't understand a fucking word you say. <laughs> What do I give him back that microphone? <laughs> we're not we're not done yet here. I was just trying to pose a hypothetical. Uh, what like since you've been confused on being the nanny? What other shows that you haven't been on? You'd be like, yeah, I was on that. Is in the background. Like, would you want people to oh, say oh, oh. you're on Friends? Oh, you know what? It, there's a couple things. It's not usually a show, um, but it's like uh, there is a hockey player that looks a lot like me. There is a uh, a lot of athletes, I guess, because I have such a. <laughs> temple of a body um and uh i'm often confused oh who else was it um oh god i can't remember i'm just not firing today um julie bowen did i say that (laughs) shit um robert forrester god robert forrester (laughs) so many guest stars (laughs) Lindsay craft that's a good one that's a good one yeah um, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't well, know. I live to disappoint. <laughs> Speaking of lookalikes, I mean, so people call you out for looking like Dave from Anchorman and, and Paul Shear. Are you guys ever in a room together, like either two or three of you, and just confusing the hell out of people? We, yeah, we did a um, podcast, one of Doug Benson's podcasts, uh, Dave Keckner and I, and... And a lot of people were like taking pictures and Instagramming it as proof that we are um, 
different people. And I, I will, I'll say, too, like, I see the resemblance. It's not just the bald head. We're both strikingly handsome. We both have this, like, sort of impossible jawline. Um, and uh, so I would get myself confused with Dave Keckner. <laughs> but you're not Dave Keckner. You're Rob I don't, Cordry. I don't look in mirrors. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for joining us today, Rob. Uh, thank uh, you for having great. me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This was really fun. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs>